Hello, Uncle Jim here. Today I want to share with you how I did last month in my retirement account. And I also want to talk about how actually selling options has helped me kind of weather the storm, the bear market storm. So I'm going to go through uh, my spreadsheet on how I did last month. And I'm also going to share with you if I had not done anything and I had not sold options in this Roth account, where it would stand today. So stick around. I think you're going to really enjoy what I have for you today. Okay, last month in my retirement Roth account, I was able to do fairly well. I think I did over 600 in premium, which is one of my highest months. And I was able to do that even though April was a really bad month. Um, I feel like, you know, with, with selling options, you can actually do better during a bear market. At least that's been my experience in my Roth account. You know, with the fact that you don't have to worry about taxes it almost causes you to build a bigger cushion. So for me, in order to sell options in that account, I had to sell some securities and I needed to have more cash. So the fact that I had more cash, it also reduced how much my account went down. Um, you know, and then also I've been primarily looking at value companies. I only want to own value companies now. Now I've learned this over time. At first I made the wrong choice and I got into some some uh, investments like ARKK and you know I'd have done really badly with those specific investments so in my retirement account I went ahead and I took a loss I believe a couple months ago on ARK but I still have it in my brokerage and I do have a pretty big loss in my brokerage related to ARK so sticking to value companies sticking to companies that pay good dividends and companies that I understand has also made a big difference and we'll talk about that when I go through my spreadsheet so last month, um, again, I did a little bit over 600. You'll see the details when I jump into that spreadsheet. And I did very little training, uh, trading. I did three puts and one call, and I closed one call. So really four trades allowed me to make over $600, which I believe was almost 1.5% uh, return just for that month. So um, let's go ahead and jump into that spreadsheet. Before I do, you know, please hit that like button. It helps the channel please subscribe and if you know if you need some hand holding during this crazy time please check out my patreon we've been having some interesting discussions on discord and our weekly meetings have become pretty pretty active rarely do they go an hour usually it's more like an hour and 15 minutes so take a look i it may be well worth your time all the information will be below with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into uh, the next part of the video and take a look at, at my uh, how I did last month. Okay, I've opened my spreadsheet. This is uh, my retirement spreadsheet. It covers my Roth retirement account, and it's started out. Well, first let's go through the top here. It started out originally in September of last year, right around fifty thousand, a little bit more, fifty thousand six hundred, and currently it's worth forty nine four eighty two. So it has gone down a little bit, um, and the initial cash was twelve thousand five eleven, and then the current cash is sixteen five seventy four. So the cash has gone up. Um, part of the reason the value is down is mainly because April was really a rough month, and the securities that I do own in the account are down a fair amount. Uh, let's go over those real quick. So I've got Wisdom Tree Hedge equity and it was i believe around 77 or 78 it's down to 72 so almost 10 percent loss there and then i shares dvy this is um select dividends it's kind of companies that are like aristocrats dividend aristocrats and it's slightly down but not much i think it was as high as 127 128 the previous month and it's around 123 and it it's a good etf it pays close to three percent Next, we have IGH, which is the iShares Core S&P mid cap, and it got as high as 285, 290, and it's now down to 249. So it's, I believe that's almost a 20 percent. Yeah, I think it's a 20 percent drop, or 15 to 20 percent. So that's where the big drop in this account occurred over this past month. Um, you know, hopefully that'll come back, but you know, all the small growth companies and. A lot of the mid caps have been hit really hard, especially in April. April was one of our worst months. 
And then, you know, here I also had 16574 So when you're selling options in one of these accounts, and this being a Roth, you know, I don't have to worry about taxes. I can just do my trading and, you know, not worry about the implications. Um, I'm able to gain a lot of cash. So in that account, a $50,000 account, 16574 is cash. So I think, what is that, like 30%, 30 35% is cash. And then this current value, and, and this is the way Schwab and most brokerages show you the values of your um, current option trades. And even though it's showing a loss, most of those I should be able to get out of without taking a big a big loss. There are one or two. So I don't think that's as negative as it should be here. I think it's I think there's really one one or two securities in this account that may be slightly at risk, but I've been able to roll everything. You know, so all of April, you'll see with the rolls I did, I was able to roll. I did go a little farther out than I typically do, and we'll go over that next when I look at the different trades. Um, but here you can see 49482 is the value of the company on May 1st, or not company, but the value of the account on May 1st. <clears throat> So next, let's drop down. So my first trade was Intel, and at the time, it was out of the money. Its price at that time was 47 So I was able to roll it out from, it was expiring on 422 I rolled it to 520 and I made $93. So, uh, and it was one contract, so, you know, it was a good roll. I, I made some pretty good money with it. And then um intel's again another company I, i'm fine with owning i think lately it's come it's way down below that i believe it's it may be into the 30s now um but i still feel like i could probably roll it at this 45 range if it gets down into the low 30s i may run into some issues igh the cover calls way out of the money so i was able to roll it and you can see i made a big chunk of change i made 353 dollars now i did go a little farther out to 819 but what i've noticed just today uh because igh has gone down so much i'm pretty close to that 85 percent threshold so i could probably close this and i'm still in may um today's may 12th i believe yep may 12th so i should be able to close this and roll it again and even you know make even more premium off this so um so that was really the only covered call. I think I mentioned in the beginning of the video that I closed the covered call, but <clears throat> I actually covered call, um, covered call. I closed AT and T, um, and it was it was in the money, but just slightly in the money. And I was able to close it for six dollars, which isn't bad. And I believe it was one contract, so that worked out well. Now we'll jump back up to Ford here. Now I do have three vertical put contracts with Ford, and it's. They're 16 and 12, so it's $16 is the short, and then the outer leg is $12, and I was able to roll those from 414 out to 520 and made $124, and I kept them at the same strike prices, and same thing with Intel, I kept it at the same strike price. Um, I did not try to lower the strike prices. Uh, this, you know, so this time I might need to, I, I don't know, things are really trending down so i may next time around see if i can get a lower strike price but um, again not bad 124 dollars on three forward contracts so i think i had at risk 1200 dollars. so that's like a 10 percent return currently uh but as you, a lot of you guys probably know ford is way down i believe it's it may be under 12 now or just above 12 i think it's down to 12 and a half so um I don't know if I'll be able to roll it as easy, easily this month, and it's actually something I'll probably roll next week. Next, um, we already talked about AT&T Big. This is probably the only one that I may run into issues with rolling in May, um, or not May. I think I rolled it out to uh, July. So I rolled it out to July, but you can see it's deep in the money. Its current price at that time was 34 and the strike... The short strike is 42 and a half and the farther out strike is 30 so or the the outer leg um so i was able to roll it i had to go a little farther out but it was deep in the money and i picked up 54 dollars so not not much and again i did i have to widen the spread yeah i had to widen the spread a little bit so the outer leg went from 30 to 27.50 so big is is probably my biggest 
problem right now, but I did notice today that it's up significantly, so it may be going to through a recovery period. I still like Big; it's a good company. So one one consideration is to let it get assigned, and I'll end up owning it. I do think it's a good long-term prospect. Um, then it's Big Lots if you don't know what company that is. So of those three puts that I rolled in one covered call that I rolled and I closed one, I was able to bring in $619, which is 1.25 monthly return. You know, so not bad. Um, all positions were less than $50. Again, dealing with value companies that are not highly priced um, gives gives you a little protection on the downside. I noticed today, I believe Google was down 40 or $50, you know, so if you're dealing with those high flyers, you could potentially get in serious trouble. Um, yearly return, that translates into 1502. And this is the thing I like to show, um, you know, so the account return from 2016 to 2020 was nine and a half. So if I'm able to get this and get this return, of course, we're in a bear market. So this year, it'll be hard to get anything like that. Actually, I think we may be down for the year. So, you know, but if you apply those values back from 2016 to 2020, it almost would be like a 24.5% total return. And if you use the rule of 72, so you divide 72 by this 24.5, that means you could double your money in less than three years. Um, so, of course, though, that that's assuming we're not in a bear market and the market's not correcting or going down significantly so this year's going to be a little bit different and we didn't 2016 through, through 2020 i think we did have a correction but we didn't have any major changes so <clears throat> um that's a little inflated but I, I still feel like selling options in these accounts does really help you um it, you create cushion and your downside is less uh, at the very end of this, I've got another spreadsheet that I'm going to show, and it'll show what the account would have looked like originally if I had never sold options in it. So, and this shows the advisor returns. So, I had an advisor money, running this account from 11 to 15, and from those years, all I got was a 4.8% return, and they were charging me 1%. So, I didn't do real well with that. Um, so, you definitely can do a little bit better, and I think you can do better both through corrections and bear markets as well as bull markets. So, um, so that's that's how I did last month. So not bad. It's one of my higher months with six nineteen and one point two five percent. So let's jump into this next spreadsheet, and I'll show you what it would have looked like. Uh, let me let me move this and. I think I already have it up. <clears throat> yeah, here we go, original. So what I'm doing here, let me get this out of the way. So I'm, I'm showing, th th this is the investments originally before I sold any. Um, and what I've done is I've just applied the April numbers. Let's widen that a little bit more. Um, values compared to what the September prices were and then you can see here if I'd kept the same investments and I hadn't been selling options and I applied what what these are worth now compared to what they were worth back um, in September you can see I actually would have been at 47,898 because of uh, you know the the additional funds or um, I think yeah I load that so I sold 45 shares here and I sold one share here and I show that over here actually I sold 145 shares so if I had kept those I would have been 47,898 so I would have gone down a bit more than than what happened and that's probably closer to how much the market was truly down at the end of of April and up here I actually show the different account values so Here's the original account value. This is the value with the April prices, and this is April current. So you can see it's definitely, what is that, $2,400 um, that I did, no, I, I did just, is that 2000 That's about 1600 I believe. Um, I wonder, yeah, that's about right, about 1600 And then, 
April without option losses. Now, I just added this in because, again, the way the account shows the losses on the specific positions, I've been able to roll them, so I've only taken one or two losses. So I don't think if, if you pull those losses out, it, it would bring the account more up to 52, which you can see would definitely be a lot better than this 47 898 um, that would have been if, if I hadn't been selling options and I kept the original investments. Um, <clears throat> so here it's the important points. It's better that I sold the options than if I hadn't, again, those values up top. The losses for options will be lower, so closer to 51K. So if, you know, I would have, I will probably have some losses. So I'm just saying, it, well, this is probably more like 51K. Um, and that's kind of what I'm representing here. And that, if I show you, let's go back to the other spreadsheet and just in case if I'm confusing people, I'm meaning this value here would be less, you know. So um, I, th I don't think in my own personal feelings or my own thought process, it would probably be less, maybe more like 1,500 to 1,000. Um, than the 3149 and that's that's why I'm showing the difference in the two values if you disagree you know add a comment below I'd be curious to, to hear what you guys think but I'm just basing it on the fact that I've been other than ARC I've been able to roll or, or get out of trouble um, so actually I ended up in the wrong one bear with me here there we go um, and again one big factor is it gives you it gives you a lot more cash you end up with having a lot more cash in your account in order to sell puts and it would have been worse if I hadn't you know it could have been worse if I had rebalanced too because some of the stuff I would have rebalanced into could have been hit even harder because I played with the idea of, of buying into some growth companies and some more uh, tech companies and they've been hit harder than a lot of these value companies that I've primarily in and then after down market will be positioned well for the move upwards or the market going up so typically after a bear market within 12 months typically you're 10 to 12 percent higher than you were at the end of the bear market so you know with being able to sell covered calls especially some of these uh, positions get assigned I should be able to do really well coming out of it too and again just here I'm just talking about how ARC kind of made the uh, you know investing in it was was a mistake and I feel like some of the other growth companies at this point you know luckily I didn't inv invest in more but I did I think I also took a loss in my brokerage with Microsoft but the tech companies and a lot of these growth companies have been hit really hard they definitely are in a significant bear market and slowly the value companies are also being pulled down some so I do think we'll come out of it uh, hopefully after the summer maybe in the fall if things get even worse it may be 2024 that we come out of it so that's one thing I wanted to share the fact that selling options for me has actually reduced my losses and kept me kept the account a bit healthier than it would have been and that's what I was trying to show here so I hope you enjoyed this thanks for joining me and I hope you have a wonderful day